Hello, everybody. It's great to be here today at this Open Power North America 2020 virtual event. My name is David Leichner. I'm the CMO at Scream. And today I'll be talking about the new normal or an evolution. What kind of effect has COVID-19 had on data generation, on how we're handling data management? And uh, we're going to just uh, dive right in. So the first thing I'd like to talk to you about is that we have common data challenges. Now, as data exploded and we became a data-driven world, there came all these new challenges. Here are some of the roadblocks organizations typically encounter in the quest to manage and analyze the full scope of their data stores. So we have continually growing data stores. They often leave data managers and analysts overwhelmed with multiple interlocking data sets. Legacy systems mean that many organizations struggle daily when it comes to managing, accessing, and analyzing their data. Data preparation is long and arduous. It can take hours or days to clean and prepare data for anal anal analytics. We're unable to ingest full data. Many organizations just don't have the means to ingest their data, and they have to settle for less than the full scope. Queries are long, so long, in fact, that some eat into too many system resources and get shut down by IT, and they can never complete. And finally, many organizations simply cannot analyze the full scope of their data. They just do not have the capability to do this, so their reports end up being limited in scope, and they just can't drill down to get even more of the uh, analytics that they're looking for, more of the insights that they're looking for. So basically, many organizations are suddenly settling for good enough instead of utilizing their data stores to their fullest. So when we think about the data challenges in the new normal with COVID-19, so there are a lot of things that are happening in the market today. There's financial uncertainty. Um, there are a lot of people who are out of work. There are a lot of people who are working from home. There are a lot of companies who have changed the way that they operate. There's an urgency to act and deliver fast. We have to change the way that we're, we're working with our customers, with our supply chains. There are many companies that have all changed that the, the way they're working on premise moved online. Some companies are handling um, their, their internal systems by having skeleton staffs working inside the company. So there are, there are different ways that people are reacting, the company is reacting. And overall, we need to change the way that we work. So I have to tell you a personal story. Last November, I was in Berlin presenting at a data leader summit, and I was coming back from a run in the Tiergarten, and I saw a statue on the side of the road, and uh, it was uh, a person, uh, a statue holding a globe. The globe was really small. The person was really big. So when I came back to my room in the hotel, I looked it up, and I found that it was Alexander von Humboldt, who was a mathematician and a world traveler and a, and a philosopher back in uh, the late 1700s, and he, he said something incredible. He had this quote, and I said, wow, this is perfect. I saw with regret, and all scientific men have shared this feeling, that whilst the number of accurate instruments was daily increasing, we were still ignorant. So we're 200 years later. Has the situation really changed? So with all the, the challenges in mind, what typically ends up happening is that organizations settle for analyzing only a small fraction of their data. Even though we have all of these new tools in the market today, we're still only analyzing a, short, a small amount of our data. And if you look at what the analysts are saying, what some of the industry experts are saying, they're saying that only 10% of the actual data is being analyzed. But that's if we have, let's say, a 100 terabyte data lake. But once we grow you know, into the 500 terabyte, one petabyte, 10 petabytes of data, we actually reduce significantly the percentage of data that we're analyzing, and we're leaving a lot of business insights lost. Now, what does that mean? That means, number one, if your competition is analyzing that data, so you're going to be at a comp competitive disadvantage. And number two, you're losing out on all of the potential insights that your business could be gaining in order to um, better, you know, handle risk management, better handle customer segmentation. We'll talk about some of these things as we go along. So there are valuable insights that are being missed. So many organizations, data lakes, and other data stores have turned into dumping grounds. And we all know that over the last two decades, data has exploded. And the reasons are numerous. The rise in mobile communications, growth of cloud traffic, the expansion of technical ca capacities, artificial intelligence, IoT, prolif proliferation of data collecting devices in every aspect of our life. 
Organizations build business models completely based on data acquisition. Some might say that the data has become the center of our universe. So this explosion of data has brought with it many opportunities as well as great challenges. On the one hand, Organizations and businesses can use their data to expand their offerings, optimize their services, grow revenues while reducing risk. But at the same time, they are inundated with so much information that often they can only access and analyze a very small portion of their data assets. So my question to you is, so, you know, what's keeping you up at night, right? There, what we're hearing from a lot of our customers and uh, the people that we talk to is that there are common struggles across the board from the ingest of data to the insights. A lot of those have to do with queries that are running way too long. They could take 10 hours, 20 hours, even a day and a half. And a lot of those queries are being canceled um, because the system resources are getting overloaded. Uh, there, they have lots of data. You know, companies have 500 terabytes, petabyte of data, but they're only analyzing 20 terabytes or 50 terabytes of that data. Why? Because there are lengthy data preparation and query uh, development cycles. Um, it takes too much, uh, you know, system resources in order to analyze those queries. Some of those queries are just simply too complex to run. So at the end of the day, they say our analytic reports are limited in scope. And what that means is we're holding back information from the business and it's keeping, um, let's say, it's, it's uh, keeping our business stakeholders from gaining as much as they can from their data. So, you know, what's happening? Over the last couple of decades, organizations have increasingly relied on legacy systems and MPPs to manage, access, and analyze their data. But for an MPP to achieve fast performance, especially with data stores growing, the system had to be constantly tuned, data had to be duplicated in multiple distributions, loaded, and then statistics had to be collected. All of this is very time intensive. Collecting and loading the data requires expertise on which columns to collect statistics on, which makes the process even more challenging. Together with this, you need to also consider OS resources such as CPU, memory, disk I.O. calculations to prepare for generating indexes, um, materialized views, projections, and more. This process requires significant time, which directly increases the latency of data availability for analysis. To put it simply, you spend all of your time getting things ready and have little time less for the actual analytics. And if we look at statistics that, uh, that we've seen in the market, so organizations report that they spend more than 60% of their time in data preparation, leaving little time for actual analytics. And Forrester noted that data scientists spend most of their time searching for managing and cleaning their massive data stores with only 20% of their time going to actual analytics. So I always tell uh, the, the, you know, the companies that I'm talking to to ask themselves two questions. First of all, are you able to analyze enough of your financial data or any other kind of data that you have in your organization to deliver new and critical insights to address critical risk, compliance, customer, and security issues? And do your financial analytics and reports, do your retail reports, do your telecom reports take too long to be useful? Or are you simply not able to execute the analytics that you need to drive your business? Okay, so let's dive in to see how you know, we're handling a lot of these challenges. So first of all, I'd like to um, give you a quote from Sumit Gupta, the, the v, who was at the time the VP of HPC and AI for IBM Cognitive Systems. This was um, a little while, a while back. And he talked about Scream, and, and actually it was a uh, press release that we had put out about um, IBM Power9 being used at LG. And he said, GPU accelerated ScreamDB boosts query performance by up to 50, 150% for IBM Power 9 users. This was the, the title of the uh, press release. And Summit said, GPU accelerated analytics are an increasingly important part of our industry. The announcement of Scream on the IBM Power 9 platform takes this concept to another level of performance as the Power 9 CPU with embedded NVIDIA NVLink interface to NVIDIA GPU allows Scream to enable even faster processing of data on Power 9 servers. And I'll talk about that in a minute and what kind of results we've seen. So a little bit about Scream, corporate profile. We're in over 90 people today. We have 10, 10 significant patents. We have strategic partnerships with, yes, NVIDIA, IBM, 
and some of the other uh, hardware vendors, business intelligence vendors, and so on. We have our headquarters in New York City. Uh, we have offices in the UK, in France, Nordics, uh, significant office in South Korea, and we have our R&D center in Tel Aviv. So Scream in a nutshell, and I won't turn this into a sales pitch. So basically, um, Scream is a data acceleration platform. We have an underlying columnar database, SQL database, so you work with familiar NCSQL. Uh, what makes us really, really fast is that we run on GPU processors, so you can ingest data at three terabytes an hour. We have adoptive auto compression, so if you're bringing in 100 terabytes, we can compress that down to anywhere between 10 and 20 terabytes, which means that once you're doing your analytics on on that data, it's going to be much quicker to get to that data. We are massively scalable, so you can start off at two, three, five terabytes, but you can build that up. And we have companies that have started at 20 terabytes and gone to petabytes of data. Uh, the footprint is extremely small because, as we know, GPUs are much, much smaller and much more cost efficient and much um, more energy efficient than CPUs. And uh, of course, we have the uh, the high throughput uh, compute, which makes us very fast, also for ingest, straight through to analytics. Uh, some of our key customers and partners you can see here, we're extremely strong in the telecom industry. We have customers in retail. We have customers in uh, finance. We have customers um, who are using us as an embedded database. And we have some very significant partners um, also in the um, also in the hardware space and also in um, storage and other areas. So let's talk about the four pillars of massive data analytics. What if we, if I told you that there was a way to have your cake and eat it too, to keep collecting data and let it grow and actually analyze the full scope of these data stores? So first, let's call things what they are. Big data is no longer big, it's massive. And chances are that your organization data stores fall within this definition. What if you could analyze your data faster even on the most complex SQL queries? What if you could analyze more data? What if you can analyze and run queries on terabytes of data and then grow that into petabytes? What if you can analyze more dimensions, add more complex joins to your queries? And finally, what if you could shorten the time it takes you to prepare that data and to prepare those queries even when you want to run ad hoc queries on raw data? Is it possible? Well, you don't have to stick with these long and drawn out processes on, on partial data source. You can uh, try Scream. <laughs> so we, you can try Scream because we rapidly integrate into your existing ecosystem. So if you today have, you know, you're working with Hadoop, you're working with um, some of the big data warehouses, whether it's uh, Exadata or Teradata or uh, Netiza or Greenplum or some of the others, you're running your systems on Power9, you can take Scream and you can implement Scream into your existing uh, ecosystem seamlessly. All you have to do is then direct the data that you want to analyze that very, let's say, um, lo those large data stores that you want to do heavy crunching and heavy complex um, analytics, and you run that into Scream, and then you have the ability to run queries extremely quickly, cut down the time it takes to run those queries from hours to minutes, from we had situations where we cut down from a day and a half to two hours, and you can also then drill down on that data because it's available to you with ad hoc SQL queries without having to go back to the data engineers to recreate new queries. Um, we can also be used for high throughput uh, AI ML financial data modeling or retail data modeling. This is just an example of one of them where you would ingest data, let's say from Hadoop into Scream. Scream would then be used to break down that data into data classification subsets and then you can uh, train your models and you can do model scoring and at the end of the day you can work with um, some of the leading uh, tools uh, to the AI uh, front ends like SASVIA or some of the others in order to uh, have more reliable AI models based on um, more classified and better classified data. So just I, I want to give you a couple of examples of uh, some of the tests that we ran. So you can see here that um, one of the tests that we ran uh, with Scream on Power9, we had up to two times faster loading. So 
We rely both on the CPU as well as on the GPU for loading. In fact, we have, let's say, what I could call a traffic warden, where Scream understands which operations should be used, um, or which, I should say, which processes should be used depending on the operation in order to maximize um, the efficiency and the speed by which those operations are then um, executed. So you can see here, this is an example of a load time for six billion TPCH records, and we were able to do this two times faster on loading. And you can see here another example. Um, this time we're talking about ScreamDB on Power9, which was between 150% to 370% faster than comparable x86 architectures and comparable CPU architectures. So we're talking about up to 3.7 times faster queries. Um, and this was uh, also a very uh, significant test, which showed the power of using Scream together with Power9. Um, so an example uh, of a use case that actually this is a uh, this is a real use case that one of our big telecom customers. So they're using Power9, they're using Scream. They brought in data into Hadoop from various data sources. We took that data, uh, which was running queries off of Hadoop and taking well over a day. We took that data, we ingested it into Scream, and we were able to reduce that, that those queries to a couple of hours. So this was, in particular, this was used for modeling of call noise using frequency um, analysis for better service. So we, we were able to help this particular uh, tier one telecom to um, supply their customers with much better service. And then they actually started using um, the product in other areas of the uh, organization for different use cases. And uh, you know, if you're interested, I'd be happy to share that with you um, in a separate conversation. So at this point, I would uh, I would like to um, you know say thank you very much to uh, the Open Power Organization for having me uh, here, and I would like to open up uh, the session for questions. So again, thank you very much for listening, and um, I look forward to taking any questions that you might have. Well, I see that we have one question that just came in. Um, that question is, how long does it take? Uh, to implement Scream inside of an existing environment. Uh, so the answer is that uh, that really depends on the use case. It really depends on how much data we're talking about. Um, if we're talking about, you know, 50 terabytes of data, up to 100 terabytes of data that can be installed on one uh, Scream instance on one GPU server. If we're talking about, you know, a couple of petabytes of data, that might be something else, just the, you know, the time it takes to ingest the data. Uh, and it could be uh, several uh, GPU servers, so it, takes, you know, it depends on whether those uh, GPUs are readily available or whether that's something that would need to be ordered for, you know, from IBM uh, together with Power9. Uh, and uh, sometimes that's actually uh, takes longer than actually installing the software itself. So thank you for that question. And I don't see any other questions coming in. So maybe um, it would be best if uh, anybody else has any questions, if uh, we can you know, hook up on, on the Slack channel, and uh, that would be a good place to, uh, to continue the conversation, if that makes sense. 